my name is Megan. Welcome to another room makeover. This time we are in my kitchen. I have done a complete overhaul in here, a very budget friendly one that I'm sharing with you guys today. I'm gonna share with you the entire process from beginning to end. If you don't follow me on Instagram already, I am at Megan Bell Made. And if you do, you'll know that I have been working on this project for quite some time, about 14 weeks to be specific. You guys on Instagram have helped me out a ton between choosing cabinet colors, deciding on whether or not I should replace my cabinets with shelves, and I just so appreciate you. So if you don't already follow me there, make sure you do that. I love sharing exactly what I'm doing, the projects that I'm working on in real time over there on my stories. So before I get into all of the details of the things that I did here in my kitchen, I'll show you the before and after first, and then I'm gonna go through the entire process of what I did in my kitchen to make it look like it does now. That includes removing the island, doing a floor cutout, replacing cabinets with shelves, painting cabinets, painting the walls, adding trim, replacing the countertops, the sink, the faucet. There was a lot that went into this and I was able to keep it at a very low cost. The most expensive thing I did was replace my countertops and that was the only thing that I didn't do myself in here. If there's anything that I've learned from this is that you need to know when to call a professional and when to be able to do something yourself. A lot of you message me and tell me how much confidence I give you to do things yourself and I hope that this gives you even more confidence to take on some of these larger projects that I do believe that you are able and capable of doing a lot of things yourself as long as you have the right tools and as long as you're being safe. So anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox and I'm going to show you guys this before and after what this kitchen used to look like and what it looks like now. So now that you've seen the dramatic transformation, I'd love to go into detail and show you how I did every single little thing. Oddly enough, the first thing I tackled in this kitchen was the windows. And you can see they only have sheetrock around them and I felt that they would look a lot better if there was some trim. I have a video where I talk about how I did this that I will link for you below. The next thing we did was removed our countertops. We paid somebody to come in and remove them and we paid somebody to come in and professionally install them. That is something I highly recommend. I don't think it's a DIY project. However, if you do have a truck and a way to dispose of your countertops, they are fairly easy to remove. Next thing we did was we removed our kitchen island. Now this was a very special project because we were not replacing the floor around it. So I did make a whole separate video all about this, which you will find in the description box. I'm not gonna go into super specific detail in this video, but I will give you a nice overview and tell you that we were using the same cabinet from the original island and building a frame around that where we were gonna have shelves on one side and we would have a butcher block top. We didn't have it in our budget to replace the flooring in here, we decided to create a floor inlay in front of the island where the stools would go. It was a very creative solution, and like I said, if you want more details on that, you'll have to watch the other video. The old countertops had a splash guard, and I was not planning to have one, and I wasn't sure if I was going to tile or if I was just gonna paint, but before I did anything, I went ahead and repaired the wall all over the drywall where the old splash guard was. Between the countertops and the wall, I just caulked there so it'd be nice and sealed. And then after much debate, I decided to remove two of the floating kind of standalone cabinets that I had in the kitchen and replace them with floating shelves. And then instead of doing a tile backsplash, I decided to simply paint all of the walls behind the countertops. And as you can see, there is a circus of colors on my lower cabinets where I tested a lot of colors and I decided finally on one. And because I was putting all new hardware on all of the cabinets, I did have to fill all of the old holes from the old hardware with some wood filler and sand that down before I could get started with painting. 
I also cleaned all of my cabinets with Simple Green. I do this anytime I'm getting ready to paint anything. I just use Simple Green and I clean really well. Because my kitchen cabinets were previously painted with Annie Sloan's chalk paint, it was really easy for me to just repaint them with Annie Sloan chalk paint. So that's what I decided to do, especially because I was able to create my own custom color. And what I did was I combined the colors cocoa and old white and created a really beautiful sort of beige, taupe, grayish, color for my lower cabinet. Even though I used a brush to paint my cabinets, Annie Sloan's chalk paint is really great that way in that you don't see a lot of paintbrush marks unless you want to see them. And so I always roll my sealant out with a foam roller and that really minimizes brush marks. All of the products that I use in this kitchen are going to be linked below in the description box if you have any questions about what I use to paint or seal anything. I made a last minute split decision to remove this other kind of small awkward cabinet as well. I installed a small piece of plywood to cover up the missing gap in the cabinet. I wanted to keep the upper cabinets white but they were in pretty bad shape and really needed to be repainted as they were previously painted with chalk paint about four or five years ago and I really just did not take great care of them. So after removing all of the doors and hardware, I cleaned them with Simple Green which is what I use before I paint anything. What I love about Beyond Paint is that you don't even have to stir it before you pour it, but you do have to roll it out, which can seem daunting if you're painting something that has cracks or crevices in it, but you can just push your little foam roller in there and it works so well, you don't need, even need a paintbrush. It's awesome. And I added some molding to the ceiling that I was continuing from the dining room. I have a video all about this that I'll also have linked below. I found a solution for installing my floating shelves that I thought was super easy, so I did make a video about that that I will have linked below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. Please make sure you're subscribed. If you're not already subscribed, if you are subscribed, I so appreciate you. And I will see you guys next time.